Hello and welcome to another episode of The Naked Turner. Today I'm going to be turning a piece of wood that Mark Bade gave me a few weeks ago. Uh, this is a piece of hard maple that looks to have some figuring and maybe some ambrosia uh, qualities to it. It uh, also may have a tiny bit of spalting toward the outside edges. So I'm going to see about uh, roughing this into a shape and then see what I might be able to turn it into. It's looking right now like it's predisposed to becoming a vase, um, a wooden vase. So uh, let's take a look at it and see what we can make. All right, so here's this chunk right here. And it's a uh, trapezoidal chunk. I just kind of roughed it in. has some uh, natural edge over here that I will be getting rid of. There's some really big splits running through this piece. but. Starting out here with about a 16 and 3 quarters by 7 and a half by 6. So I'll probably end up with like a 5 and a half inch tapered cylinder here. This end is about 5, 4, uh, four and 7 eighths by 6. So uh, I'm going to start by roughing this into a complete cylindrical tapered uh, cylinder. I've got everything locked off here, tailstock brought in got my uh, step center, my quills locked off, and uh, everything's pretty much ready to go. Don't forget, read, understand, and follow all the shop safety for any tool you're going to use, and wear your eye protection. Okay, let's get started turning this. I'm going to be starting out using my, uh, let's see here. I'm going to be using my P and N roughing gouge in uh, a handmade handle that I made using a half inch drill chuck from an old drill of mine that crapped out. And let's turn down the speed. Let's see what we can do here. Yeah, I'm up here at seven hundred and sixty RPM. sharpen up this rough and gouge and I'll check in with you in a second. Alright, so now I've got this sharpened up. So, I think you'll be able to see this. There's all kinds of figured curly maple right in there. And over here, just incredible. And then there's a little bit of some spalting here and up here. Um, but this is looking really, really nice, like beautiful piece of maple. So I'm going to keep shaping this until I get a shape that I'm happy with and then um, I'll show you the next part of the process. Alright, so I've got it mounted up here in my large uh, stronghold chuck. Um, so these, uh, these jaws have a really good double grip on this piece and then I still have my tail stock brought in to support this end. But I'm pretty much happy with the shape I have here and uh, the wood is looking incredibly beautiful so what I'm going to do now is sand this and uh, I don't know that I'm going to be able to hollow this entire thing because it is so deep but what I'm going to try to do is hollow down as far as I can and then maybe leave a little bit of solid weighted base in this or I may refine the, the bottom of this uh, and not have it end up here. 
So we'll see what happens, but I'm really liking the shape that I have. And uh, this piece is, so you know, five and three quarters across the lip here. And then it's 15 inches long. Um, and it's about five and a half inches here at the widest point. So it's a pretty good size vase and it's just got so much beautiful quilting and figuring in it that I want to give it a sand, put some sanding sealer on it and see what it looks like. And then I'm going to decide whether I want to leave this alone or I may do a tinting on this like a uh, an emerald green or something like that. We'll see. I may just leave it natural. If it's so beautiful that I don't want to sully it up, I may just leave it completely natural. So I'll do some sanding and then I'll check back in with you. Okay, so let me zoom out a little here. Um, so I have this sanded down now to 320. It feels really, really nice. And I'm going to apply some sanding sealer now. Um, it has some really interesting little bug uh, holes that were starting part of the spalting or maybe some other some beetle creating some color in this but uh, I'm gonna turn this way down slow in reverse and I'm gonna start applying some sanding sealer to this and I'm gonna flood it with sanding sealer actually here let me just show you a little bit more here. Turn these lights around to this side. And look at that. Wow. Anyway, I'm gonna let this coat of sand and seal it dry up completely and uh, do some wet sanding and then I'll check back in. Alright, so got a couple coats of friction rub polish on here now. What I did was applied three coats of sanding sealer, which is nothing more than shellac and uh, denatured alcohol 50-50. And then I sanded it up to 800 grit. And now I'm applying friction rub. And what I do now when I'm applying friction rub, I actually take my same sanding sealer and put it right here on my rag. Then I take a little bit of walnut oil, also right on my rag, and then rub it on here. And then, turn on my light, and friction rub it in. And I'm running at a fairly slow speed, 600 RPM right now. I don't want to run it too fast. I don't want to um, bake on the finish too much yet. I want to just put it on slowly so as not to abuse the friction rub finish too much at first here. All right, I'm running in reverse and now you can see the incredibly crazy, beautiful figuring that's in this piece. I mean, this side is just all over the place, totally on fire. And because of that, um, and the fact that there's a lot of different colors in the ambrosia on this side here, I decided that I'm not doing any coloring on this. It is just too incredibly gorgeous as is. Uh, I want to leave the naked beauty of this piece of wood and thank you so much mark i really hope i'm able to hollow this whole thing out it's going to be a real challenge so um there you have it that's this phase of it and i'll check back in with you as i start getting some hollowing going on okay so i just took uh i watched mike walt's video on uh drilling depth holes in pieces like this any kind of piece and he had showed how he had taken and uh, ground off the screw point on, um, on an auger bit. So what I did is I put the auger bit in here since it was a pretty big one and I was a little uncomfortable handling such a, handling such a big auger bit in 
my uh, handheld handle, I chucked it up and just drilled a hole part of the way in here so that I could do some reverse hollowing inside of this hole. So that's where I'm at right now, and this hole is actually it's approximately seven inches deep. It's about seven inches deep in here. So I'm going to start with that. I didn't want to drill too far just in case I'm unable to do a lot of hollowing in this extremely uh, figured wood, which means the grain is going in all different kinds of crazy directions. Uh, so it's going to be a fairly challenging hollow. So uh, I'm getting started, plus I don't have hollowing tools, so I'm doing this with um, some traditional tools and then maybe a, a scraper that I made a long time ago. We'll see. All right, I'm going to get back to hollowing here. And it's just a real slow, boring process, so I'm not going to bore you with that. Alright, so I'm about five inches hollowed into this thing. And uh, let me just say, this hard maple that's figured like this is some of the hardest hollowing I've ever done. Uh, I'm using my 3 8 bowl gouge and uh, what else? And my Forsner bit and that, um, that uh, all bit, or sorry, the. Um, and the auger bit that I was using that you saw earlier. So uh, it's going to take me a while to hollow this out and I may even have to make a specialty tool or something like that. We'll see what happens. Alright, so as you can see there's going to be quite a bit of hollowing uh, to get this thing hollowed out and uh, I'm pretty sure I'm going to have to make a specialty scraper tool or uh, something to get down in there because uh, this thing is deep. So I may end up having to uh, shorten it off a little, but I hope I don't have to do that. So thanks for watching here, and I'll check back in. Hi, I'm back here one week later with this vase that I was creating out of a chunk of wood that Mark Bade had given to me, this beautiful piece of figured maple. And um, I got to a point where the tools that I had we're not capable of hollowing any further so um, yesterday I made myself a uh, tool that will hopefully allow me to continue hollowing this piece out and so far it's working really well let me show you the tool okay so what I have here is a piece of tube stock that had about a 7 16 interior uh, hole size and then it's about three feet long. And then what I did was took and put a high-speed steel uh, cutter head that had kind of like a router bit shank on it that I drilled out a half inch hole so that that half inch shank could fit right down inside of the tube. And then let me see if I can zoom in on this a little bit here. And focusing up. Okay. So, see this piece here has got a scraper edge on it with a curve that I sharpened into it. And uh, this seems to be working really well. What I'm doing is drilling a depth hole and then using this to hollow everything out. Let me show you where I'm at. Okay, so what I've done now is I've hollowed in here. I'm about... Which is, um, hang on one second here, my tape measure. Uh, let's see, I'm about 11 inches down into this piece, and I only have about maybe another two and a half, three inches to go until I'm down to my desired depth. But just wanted to show you that tool, and I'm getting in here. I have a depth hole drilled in here, and now I'm just kind of coming in and removing material all the way in and out. And uh, it's a long, hard process, but it seems like it's going to be working. Okay, hold on. Alright, so it's a long, hard hollowing process, but uh, I think this tool here is really going to help me finish and achieve the depth that I want to get on this uh, vase. And with all that curly maple in there, it's some really challenging hollowing. Um, I'll tune back in once I'm finished with the hollowing, and I'll show you the uh, finished results. 
Hopefully it doesn't explode on me. Thanks again for watching. If you're enjoying this video, please click like and subscribe. And watch some of my other videos where I do all types of different things. Bowls, plates, platters, goblets, uh, turning tops, um, uh, off-centered pieces, uh, square pieces, out-of-balance pieces, um, a little bit of everything. So I hope you enjoy my channel and I hope that in some way it's inspirational for you. Thanks for watching and please click like and share. Make a comment if you have one, whether it be positive or negative. I love receiving comments. Alright, so I've got this hollowed out all the way down to here. I'm not going to be able to hollow any further, which is actually good. I'm leaving the last bottom inch, inch and a quarter um, unhollowed because right here I got, uh, I had a little bit of a ridge inside and a, from a catch that I got. So I was trying to work that ridge out and I got like paper thin right here. So what I did was treated the inside um, with CA glue, a medium and thick CA glue, and then let that cure up and then sand it down inside. It's not as smooth as I would like it. The top uh, three inches is really, or top actually maybe four inches or so, is really nice and smooth. But then I was a little worried to put my hand down in here and sand. I don't want to have a catch and rip my wrist off. So uh, I'm going to just allow the, the inside toward the bottom to be not rough, but not quite uh, up to the 400 grit sandpaper that I have everything else. Actually, the outside is 800 grit sandpaper as well as the lip and rim here. But I just wanted to share with you. Um, by making that tool, I was able to hollow this out as deep as I wanted to, which is literally all the way down to right here. So now what I'm going to do is come up and part this off. I'll have about an inch and a quarter of solid bottom, um, and it just turned out really nicely. Let me zoom in a little bit here and get this to focus up, hopefully. There. Oh, oh that's why. Okay. So, it's got some incredible quilting and figuring in it, and I just have to do a little bit more buffing, and this piece will be completely finished. But anyway, I just wanted to share that with you, and now maybe, let me pan over here, and so right here, I don't know if you can see that, but right there, is where I had a little, I got a little too thin, so uh, it was a real disappointment, but I think I was able to salvage this piece. It doesn't look like I'm going to have any problems with it. So anyway, thanks again for watching. Hope you had a good time, and uh, safe turning. Thanks for watching another episode of The Naked Turner.